Business Today is brought to you by Shouldn't banking start with you? After all, it's your life and we're just one part of it. So no matter what life throws at you, at Scotiabank, we guide you through it with people who actually listen and with services that enable what matters most to you. Because at Scotiabank, it starts with you. This is Business Today. I'm Fernanda Redford. A leading political economist is recommending that Barbados looks at diversifying its reliance on the International Monetary Fund and associated agencies after meeting certain targets and move towards lending from China. Head of the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Dr. Don Marshall, tells Business Today that like any other lenders, Chinese lending would come with some conditions. He, however, argues that these conditions were less onerous than those imposed by the IMF. We are right now in a four-year arrangement. It asks us to perform at levels, uh, a primary surplus target in terms of our budget of 6%. And it asks us to sustain that 6% for the course, the majority of the four years, as a precondition for accessing any further loans from the IMF and its other support institutions like IADB and so on. We have to be in a position, now with the Chinese monies on offer, Chinese financing on offer, to be able to leverage globalization much wiser. The, final, the global financial order is much more broader than what the IMF and IADB will wish to imagine. Uh, China, there is a power shift with China emerging as another pillar for alternative financing. So we must be able to not shut off that option, but look at it, see what loans we can gather, note that it doesn't, uh, that it provides you with the, 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 the fiscal space to do things and make a critical decision. But certainly in Barbados, I would recommend uh, just after we meet certain targets that we should look to diversify our reliance on Paris Club lending towards lending coming from China at this point. Dr. Marshall says that there is also a need for small island states to consider concessionary financing, especially in the face of climate change vulnerability and other constraints. But you don't get concessional financing from capital markets. You get, uh, those, are, those are loans that make you scream because the, the premium on them is, is expensive if you don't have investment grade. And even when you do have investment grade, it's not good advice to engorge yourself on uh, loans coming from the capital markets. You really should be, there really should be structures in the world for concessional lending. And in comes China to fill the breach since 2008. And it's not by accident that some of the United States' strongest allies, including those in the G20, have accessed Belt and Road funds to help facilitate not only investment in their own productive sectors, but in some, case, some cases, some uh, financing to allow them the fiscal maneuverability, opening up a policy space and fiscal space to do more by way of ensuring the growth of their productive sectors. IMF monies doesn't give you that fiscal space because of the constraints imposed by the conditionalities. That's a straight message. Chinese lending, gives you that scope and that maneuverability. Word came from the Central Bank of Barbados this week that government revenue was $56 million below the target for the last quarter of 2018 due to larger than anticipated tax refunds. Governor of the Central Bank, Cliviston Haynes, disclosed the numbers in a review of that period. He also revealed that government provided $54 million in income tax, $18 million in value-added tax, while the new fuel tax raked in $35 million during the period. The public finances between April and December 2018 improved significantly, reduced interest costs associated with the suspension of commercial external debt payments, and lower interest rates on domestic government securities, effective October 1, contributed to the outturn. However, the fiscal outturn also benefited from non-interest expenditure that was lower than originally targeted, resulting from reduced transfers and lower capital expenditure.
Revenues were 56 billion below the target due to larger than anticipated tax refunds. The impact of lower imports and a lag in the collection of some of the recently implemented budgetary measures. Government provided refunds of 54 million in income tax and 18 million in the value added tax, resulting in lower than anticipated net earnings from income tax and VAT. Excise revenue and import duties also declined. However, the new fuel tax realized 35 million during the period. Revenue from property taxes surpassed the target by 17 million given the collection from the tax amnesty. Corporate taxes also overperformed, despite 26 million in refunds owing to significant first time payments by recently registered international business companies. The foreign exchange fee yielded 56 million in tax receipts over the period. Barbados is still trying to determine the value of its blue economy. That's according to the minister responsible for the sector, Cook Humphrey, who disclosed that officials have been holding talks with international agencies to flesh out the strategic direction and plan for his ministry, which also includes that of marine affairs. Well, we have the responsibility for ocean space. Our exclusive economic zone is 400 times the size of our land space. And we know that is a value, but what is the true value of that? We don't know. We need to know what's the fish that we have in our waters, the coral that we have in our waters, and to give it an economic value, the minerals in the waters, and to give that um, some economic assignment. So that we can start having a real conversation about the value of our waters. Why is that important? Well, there are people who want to come and use those waters. And we're saying if you want to utilize the waters, you're utilizing X amount of cost. If you damage the water, this is the cost to, to, to Barbados and to Barbados. And now for today's financial tip. Achieving financial fitness means reducing your spending and bulking up on your savings. Developing a written budget and making sure every dollar has a purpose is one of the best ways to get your spending under control. Write up a budget for this year after tracking your spending for 30 days. It's a research strategy you should use to guide your spending. That's business today. Remember, you can get more business and news by logging on to our website, www.bobbitistoday.bb, subscribing to our e-paper and liking us on Facebook. I'm Fernella Wedderburn.